Well, the 250LM, I'm a little bit of a specialist on 250LMs because when they first came out they weren't homologated because they hadn't made enough of them. So we had to run them as prototypes. But uh, that gave us carte blanche and you know we could do anything we liked to them to save weight and to improve their performance. Uh, so I did, having done the same thing with the GTO Ferrari, you know, when I cut seven inches off the top of the windscreen and reduced the frontal area, I went to town on the LM and because it had to earn my, some money to make, to make me worthwhile racing it. So the first LM we had was very good. We, we liked it. I really took to it like a duck to water. But we did a lot of modifications. We designed a new long nose for it, which they actually incorporated into the second series 275 GTBs. And we tested it on the Autostrada outside Modena at lunchtime when all the lorry drivers were in there eating their lunch and the road was clear. Because if you're doing about 300 kilometres an hour down the Autostrada and you see a truck up in front of you and a sort of Fiat 1100 behind him about to pass, you do take your life in your hands. But once you got used to it and got the thing set up and balanced, it was a fabulous car. It knocked spots off the GTO, it was much better. But people seem to have forgotten about it, although they're coming back slowly now. Uh, everyone raves about the GTO, but the LM was miles better, you know. And it was very competitive, and uh, it used to take care of the GT40s, you know, quite well. My LM was the last 250, well, it, they were 275 LMs, they only made one 250. It was the last built, and uh, it's chassis number 8165.